So let's get going. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, and this is the Production Tracker webinar, getting started with Production Tracker. Uh, and we're gonna talk today about being more profitable with data. Uh, for those of you that wanna know, we are recording this and I will be publishing this on uh, my YouTube channel and Production Tracker will also be sharing this on theirs as well. Uh, and uh, if you want to get anything emailed to you, just let us know what you want in the chat and then we'll take care of it from there. So anyway, again, my name is Marshall Atkinson with Atkinson Consulting. And I'd like to introduce uh, Unit Potter with Grid. It's just the company that uh, is all behind Production Tracker. How are you doing today, Unit? I'm good, Marshall. Thank you so much. And really excited to kick this off now. Yeah, so uh, we're very happy to be here. And we had a, a whole bunch of folks sign up for the webinar. And if you didn't join in and you're watching this as a recording, thank you for watching this later. We really appreciate that. Um, again, if you do or watch, if you are watching this live, if you have any questions, just put them in the Q&A and uh, either you or myself will, will uh, take the time to answer that. And we'll have some questions at the end. So anyway, I think that's all the housekeeping we have. So you ready to get going? So today's uh, agenda is we want to talk about why tracking production is important. And I think um, you we really want to dig into this because I think if you're running a shop uh, this is where the rubber meets the road for you to understand where you can do some things with continued improvement and all types of stuff. So I think that's really important there. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about today is how you can set up production tracker for your shop and also how it links with other platforms like uh, Printavo or Shopworks, or we have a bunch of them that are coming down the road, so we can talk about that. And then next is how does Production Tracker fit into your daily workflow? We're going to show you how that happens. And then lastly, uh, how do you get your crew on board? So it's not so much that you've got this wonderful data tracking thing, right? We want you to actually use it. <laughs> That's the important thing is that you use it and you and we're really about making data uh, uh, tracking and obtaining the data and the metrics from your shop as frictionless and as easy as possible. And we're going to show you how that happens. Oh, and then, yeah, implementation. Sorry, I had one more point implementation and plan and management. We're going to show you how you can use this and kind of uh, walk you through what you need to be able to do on kind of a calendar with some uh, benchmarks for you. Plus the results that you can expect. <laughs> and what's for the future? <laughs> so why is tracking production import, important, okay? So what we're gonna show you here in a minute is we have an example shop where we've built a dashboard and we're gonna show you some uh, metrics and uh, how you can be doing this. And so for an example shop, uh, this could be just like yours. So they have a, a couple of embroidery machines, they've got an auto, uh, they've got graphic design staff. They have a screen room staff. They've got other people that work there. Uh, and then during the busy season, they might bring in more people and that helps them get everything done. So what we want to know, uh, next slide. What we want to know is uh, how we're looking at things. And so we really want to understand our metrics you can just you can really dig into your profit, right? And so when we think about some things, uh, the profitability is all about eliminating uh, the reasons why you're not getting uh, jobs done during the day, and we can focus our attention on that. So what we have to know is how fast, 
how many, where are the problems, what's going on, and uh, getting your KPIs handled on the floor. Most people, you know, used to do it. I used to do it with a paper form. And now it's just as easy as clicking a button. And then you can find out what the percentage of your downtime is. And then what is our capacity for our, uh, for our, um, for our uh, equipment? And also what happens when we have poor quality and how does that hinder us when we're trying to make more money? And then also, if you know, how fast you're running and what your average capacity is for the day, you'll know your, uh, you'll be able to make a better production schedule, which allows you to stay on time and also um, uh, tell your customers what the real uh, uh, deadlines are gonna be and what you're able to do because you know, uh, and you can make better decisions because you've got the real data in your pocket and you can make these decisions. And then um, as we all know, one of the biggest challenges, especially in screen printing, is the delay from sales to art, to screen room, uh, to production, that challenge. That's what drives a lot of our downtime is because we're waiting on screens, we're waiting on something. And so if we can build some KPIs about that, then we can figure out how to change things. And then once we make the changes, then what we can do is we can uh, see if there, it's getting better or it's getting worse or it's staying the same. What's going on with that? And that's where uh, the real power of this tool lies. So, um, so let's look at some basic math, right? So let's just say that you value your automatic screen printing press time at $300 an hour. You could do this for embroidery, you could do this with other things, but we're just gonna do this with uh, uh, screen printing on an auto, right? So if we say our press is worth $300 an hour, and for our example, we set up uh, three screens on average for a job, and we do about 10 jobs a day, right? So that, and our average set at time is about five minutes and six, uh, 5.68 minutes. Uh, it works out to the math to be about $852. That's what it costs us to set up for the jobs in our downtime because we're not actually printing shirts, right? If we save a little time, if we do the effort to try to reduce our setup time by being more organized or using Trilock or different methods, right? Maybe we shave off some time. We could save uh, a little bit of money, right? $109.50, right? So uh, if we do that for the whole year, we just saved $28,579 worth of opportunity time Cost because what we're doing is we're getting more things handled because we're not as um, as down, right? We're not like delayed because of our setup. So, but here's what you got to have is you have to be able to track this stuff to see if you're getting better or not, right? And so that's where production tracker really helps you is because we're measuring what we're doing. We're measuring how long it takes to set up, we're measuring our quantity that we're doing, we can, we can measure a lot of things. And the beauty of the production tracker app is that a lot of this, these uh, metrics and stuff, the KPIs that are important to you are custom built for your shop. You tell us what you want and we'll help you set that up based on how you work. So, Here's what you could be measuring. And, the, and this could be in any function in your shop. This could be in embroidery. This could be with your heat press. This could be in your screen room. This could be in your art department. This could be in uh, screen printing, of course, DTG, heat press, whatever. You could be measuring time. So how long do things take to do, right? How, you know, start to finish, how long? And then also, for your day, right? This is where downtime comes in. For your day, how much of that time that's available was spent doing value-added tasks? 
So if we're measuring how long we're doing things like printing a shirt or embroidering a shirt or DTGing a shirt or whatever, we can also measure by default how much time we're not doing stuff and that feeds into your downtime, right? We can also measure quantity. So how many jobs or how many screens we're using or how many shirts we're printing or embroidering or how many stitches are we running a day, right? What is the average on that, right? So today we had one number and tomorrow we have another number and Wednesday we have another number. And what is that every day? You can graph that, you can see it as a graph and you can see what's going on with things. And so this is how your leadership team, your production team, people can get excited about this stuff because it's real time information that you can show in a dashboard. And we'll show you that here in a little bit. Velocity, of course, is how fast we're doing things. So we wanna know what our average speed is per hour for impressions for printing. Right? Are you at 375 impressions an hour or 550? Right? How, what is your average? This really helps us understand how much we can do. Right? And so uh, that's one of the key things that we're looking at here is how fast do we do things? And so, how fast does it take us to do whatever? Right? We can build. A, uh, a simple way of measuring that. And then you have that information. And of course, downtime, I just talked about. So next slide. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much, Marshall. So I'll take this up from here now. Uh, right. So what we're going to do is um, we'll quickly walk you through the basic setup of production tracker and how the application works. Uh, from here. Uh, so we've built the production tracker application so that decorators can accurately measure their production metrics, like, you know, the ones that were Mar that Marshall was talking about in near real time and take better decisions, take corrective actions on pricing, on user trainings to maximize their shop's profits and potential, right? Um, the application works on any device. Uh, so it works on an Android phone, an iOS phone, uh, 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 it, it can work on any tablet. Uh, we recently launched it on the Amazon tablet as well. So you could be running the production tracker app on Amazon Fire tablets now. Uh, and, uh, and, and you can have your crew get started in under like, you know, 10, 20 minutes, and you can have the production metrics coming to your, uh, to you uh, in, in near real time. Uh, so we'll do a live demo of the production tracker of how to set up once you sign up and, and how you can get started with the production tracker app instantly. Uh, so the key aspects of setting up the production tracker are these uh, five components. So we have users, which is essentially uh, you add your crew and you can get you can you can get the production tracker app on their devices. Uh, then you add your machines and work groups. Uh, you can add your machines for across different decoration methods that we have. So we currently support screen printing and embroidery, and we're launching other decoration methods uh, soon now. Then there is configuration for shifts and breaks. So why shifts and breaks are important is because it helps the production tracker app calculate your uptime for your machines, right? So you can configure your work hours and break times and the production tracker will automatically calculate uh, how much time you're actually spending on production right how how, how much time your your machine is operational uh, then the next step is creating jobs so you're tracking jobs on production tracker and there are two ways of creating jobs in production tracker that we're going to talk about very soon uh, and then adding custom problems and locations right so uh, let's say you're tracking on production tracker and you face a problem you could just track that problem as well. And you can actually tag what kind of problem you're facing. And you can get in real time information on what are the most frequently occurring problems for a particular press or, or with a particular operator, right? So all, all of these things are set up on production tracker and you can get started with production tracker within a few minutes. Uh, so we'll do a live demo of the application. Uh, so this is what the production tracker application looks like. And the first step that we're going to look at is how to add your crew. Uh, so this is an account that I created just a couple of hours back. Uh, and when you sign up, this is exactly what you'll see on the production tracker app on your account. Uh, the setup and the production tracker tabs here 
uh, are essentially where like you know you're setting up all your all your basic information and the production tracker is where you get your production logs in real time when the users are using it uh, going to the first step on production tracker is adding your crew so we have these five uh, buttons on the panel on the left hand side and the third one is where you can click on and you can add your users right uh, so we have an add user button on top right we click on that you can add your users either by their email or their phone numbers uh, or you can use both so let me just add a user on this account and i'll show you how that works so i'll add one of my colleagues ayush uh, the user type is basic and click on this add button right um, so ayush is now added as an operator on the production tracker app and whichever device uh, ayush has you can log in and start using the production tracker app immediately. Uh, once you add the user, they typically get an email to set up their passwords. Uh, in case you want to set up a manual password, you can click on a button here and set up manual password and give the user the application, the password, and they can just get started with it, right? Uh, so that's how uh, uh, easy it is to add your users, add your crew, and you can get started with production tracker app. And I, the, I'd like to yeah. in, interject something, you know, is uh, I know a lot of people are concerned about using the app on their employees' phones because we don't want phones on the production floor. This is why right. this works on iPads. It works on the Amazon tablet, like he was just talking about, or any other tablet device. It allows you to not use a phone, but you're using their email and that way uh, they can log in every day. So I just want to throw that out there. That's correct. Uh, thanks, Marshall. Uh, so in the live demo part, the second step is, so once you've added your crew, the second step is to add your machines. Uh, let's say you have like, you know, two embroidery and one, uh, one screen printing. So we'll go back to the production tracker app, click on the home section, home button here on the left panel. Uh, and this is where our setup cards, cards are available, right? So we have the work groups, problems, shifts, breaks, and locations, things that we were talking about a while back. Uh, to add your machines, you can click on this plus button for work groups, and it will open a spreadsheet type interface, and you can just add your machine here, right? So let's say we have a screen printing machine called Cobra. Uh, we'll enter the machine name, select the machine type, uh, so the screen printing trackers and embroidery trackers are live and we're adding DTG, heat press and, and dye sublimation as well. Uh, so we select on screen printing and select the users who are going to work on it. Let's say it's Ayush again. And uh, this blue tick just allows you to create this work group or the machine. Uh, so once this is done, now the particular operator or user can start tracking all the activities that are happening on this particular machine on the production shop floor using the tablets or any device that they're that they're working on. Uh, so for every for each of these configuration sheets, we have the view page here where you can actually see all the work groups that you've already added, and you can make edits in in them if if at all required, right? Uh, so yeah, that's how you add your work groups. So first you add your crew members, your your users, then you create your work groups, and you're ready to go. Coming back again to the demo, uh, the next step is customizing your shifts and breaks. So as I mentioned, uh, entering your shifts time, shift times are critical because it helps production tracker calculate the uptime of your machine. Uh, so let's go back to the production tracker live account. So we have shifts and breaks here, as you can see uh, on the setup tabs. So let's click on shift. By default, when you sign up, we add a day shift with 7 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. As, as, your, as your start and end time. So in case you're just running one single shift, you don't have to go and add another shift. You can just click on this edit button and change the time to your uh, shift time, right? So let's say it's 8 a.m. And then you can end, you can edit the end time as well. And that's, that's, that's all, right? That's all you have to do to set up your shift time. Uh, let's say you're also running a night shift, then you can just click on this enter data button on top and uh, and enter enter another shift here, right? So let's say we're entering a night shift, starts at 10 p.m. and ends at say 2 a.m. We go to view data again and 
right here, our shift has been added. Uh, similarly, we have the breaks configuration here. Uh, again, when you sign up, we give two default break configuration, a morning break and a lunch break starting at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, let's, say, let's, let's say you just have one single break that you do at 2 p.m., then you can just click on this and delete this. Otherwise, you can edit times and you can add the break uh, configuration again anytime that you want. Uh, the production tracker takes these break hours into account when the uptime for the machines are getting calculated. So it's critical that these are set up to make sure that you're getting the, the right data uh, uh, when the operators are using the application. So going back to the fourth step, which is integrating with your existing order management system. So this is something that we highly recommend. Uh, so what this does is uh, production tracker, we're already integrated with Printavo and we're looking at integrations with Shopwork, Monday.com and other, other shop management software, order management software as well. Uh, when you integrate or when you connect production tracker to your shop management software, the jobs that you're tracking get automatically created from that gets automatically pulled from your from your uh, order management systems, right? So you don't have to manually create jobs anymore, uh, which makes it very simple for the operators to track because they have everything set up when they come in. They can just click on the job and they can they can get started with it. Uh, so let me show you how that works. Uh, so we have in the left panel the integration section. So these are all different softwares that we're looking at to integrate with in near future. Uh, we're already listed on Zapier. So you could be just using Zapier to integrate with any software that is available there. Otherwise, we have Printavo integrations right now uh, already available on Production Tracker. Uh, and we have a, a, quite a few shops using uh, the Production Tracker with their Printavo. With, with Printavo. Uh, all you have to do is enter your API key, account email, and a status that you want to pull from Printavo or or other so, other so, uh, so, any other software that you're using, right? Uh, the status can be in production, ready for production, or any other status that you're using. And Production Tracker will start pulling all the de data directly from Printavo uh, or other software, and your jobs will get created. Uh, so uh, great. talk yeah. talk hey, before you move on. Talk about uh, future uh, updates, for example, Deco Network, Asana, Salesforce, that type of stuff. Yeah, so we are, uh, so as I mentioned, we're integrating with Monday and, uh, uh, and Shopworks right now. And uh, Inksoft, Impress, Deco Network, Priceit, Shopworks, so these are all under consideration. We're talking to them, we're looking at their APIs. And very soon we will have them integrated on production tracker as well. Uh, meanwhile, if like you know, if any of you want to integrate with any other software that you're using for your scheduling or your order management, we can look at it and we can put it put that in our pipeline and we make sure that we integrate uh, with them as well, right? Provided the APIs are available. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where we are on the integrations part. Uh, we're trying to get as many software as possible to make sure that we have we give you a seamless tracking experience and the job creation doesn't have to be manual and it just gets automated completely. So moving ahead to the next step, which is the final stage, is setting up your problems and decoration locations. So we'll go back to our homepage, uh, to the setup section, and let's view uh, let's view the problem list. So this blue icon is the view data button here. So when you sign up, we give a default list of problems for screen printing and embroidery because these are the trackers that are live on production tracker right now. And at any given point of time, you can edit them or you can add more problems that you frequently face on the shop, right? So let's say you want to add for something for screen printing. Uh, say screen opt out and submit, and this becomes a part of your problem list. So you could be creating a custom list of problems that you frequently face, and you can just start tracking them as well, right? And and you can have analytical, uh, you can have dashboards that tells you that these are the most common problems that occur frequently with these operators or these uh, presses and so on and so forth. Uh, 
Similarly, we have the print locations configuration here. Uh, again, when you sign up, we give you a default list of print locations, so you don't have to do a lot of work in actually adding the most common print locations. Uh, but in case there's anything missing in it, you can just click on the enter data button here and configure your print locations as well. Uh, right. And, and, and then they will just appear on the production tracker application and, and you can start using it. So that's that's about it. That's that's the configuration. It typically takes less than like you know 10 to 15 minutes to configure production tracker and get started with it with your first job. And you can and you can just start tracking immediately with the devices that you have. So uh, Ashley has a question wanting to know if this is the same thing that Printavo is launching on their website. And is this a third party application? The answer, Ashley, is that this is a third party application. Printava is launching a scheduling feature. So that we don't, a production tracker is not a scheduler. This allows you to track the production metrics on your floor. So it's a little different. Great, thank you, Marshall. Um, so moving ahead, uh, we have a short video where we'll show you how the production tracker application works. So I'm just gonna play this video now. And you'll see the light. So we go to there. production tracker right there at the top and we just hit the purple plus sign and we need to find the order that we want to work on. We're going to be on press one today. And then what we want to do is find our order, which is army one, two, three. That's a full front sample. You can see it's 24 pieces only on the front. And by the way, if it had a back, that would be listed twice because those are two decoration events. So we're only gonna do 24 and we need to start the setup. So we just hit setup start and that's gonna ask you how many screens it is. And we're gonna say it's two screens and we don't need to put any notes in there, but there's area for notes if you wanna record something and you just hit submit. Now, this is timing your crew right now, setting the job up. So they're putting the screens in the press, they're registering the screens, they're putting the ink in, they're putting the squeegees, the flood bars in, they're doing all of their work. When they finish, you just hit, they would hit set up, finish, and that stops timing that. Let's just say there's a problem with one of the screens. It was just discovered and we need to resolve it before we can move forward. We hit problem start and you could pick the problem and let's just say that the screen is clogged and we can put not washed out if you want to put even more clarity to it so it's not washed out well and you hit submit. So now they're going back to the washout area and they're blowing the screen out a little bit and they're gonna set it back up. And now it's back in and it's ready to go. So we hit problem finish, submit, and then that tells the app how long it took to resolve that problem and what the problem is. So if you wanna start tracking all of your problems during setup or production or anything like that, this is how you can do it and it automatically tracks everything. So we got our new screen in and we're ready to rock and roll. The manager just approved the job. So now we hit set up, finish, submit. Now the total time that took is now logged in the cloud for us to use as data later. And now we need to hit production start. Now the reason why it doesn't just automatically flip to production start is because we know that sometimes right after that jobs are approved and we're ready to go, that's when somebody decides to go to the bathroom or something happens and we don't really start right away. Maybe it's 10 or 15 minutes after it's approved. So this allows you to find out that chunk of downtime so you can do something with it. But for right now, we're just gonna hit production start, submit, and now we're printing those 24 pieces. We know exactly what's going on. And as soon as everything is printed, we're gonna hit production finish. If there was a problem during production, we could hit problem start, and that would start that whole process again. But we printed those 24 shirts and they look fantastic. We don't have anything to worry about. 
So we're just going to hit production finish. And here's what happens. It asks you, how many did you print? We printed 24. The reason why this is here is let's say you were printing 5,000 shirts and we started it at the end of the shift and we only printed two cases. So we've got 144 printed. The rest of them we're gonna to print tomorrow. You just put in exactly what we printed today and then on tomorrow we can log finishing the rest of the job. So we didn't have any misprints. We didn't have any defects. If you wanted to put some notes in there, like don't forget to warm up boards or something like that, you can add a note and then just hit submit. And then that's where all that information goes and we're ready to rock and roll. So yes, uh, so that's how the production tracker application works. Uh, what you're essentially doing here is tracking each and every action that is happening on the shop floor while the production is going or while you're setting up screens and 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 the and the production tracker creates the metrics and gives you all kind of production metrics in a graphical format, which we're gonna see now. Uh, and, so we and had a question. It, yeah, it, 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 I'd like to add that you know that whole scenario was screen printing, but this could easily just be embroidery. Once yeah. we get DTG and uh, heat press and uh, whatever else, you can be tracking those things just as easy. And uh, it's just a different different steps and di a little different workflow. But you can see how easy it is just by hitting buttons. You're tracking what's going on on the floor, and and we're getting that data. We're compiling that data. And now we can show what's going on with some dashboards and graphing. That's correct. Uh, so sorry. we go to production tracker right there at the top. And we right. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this is a snapshot of, of the dashboard that you get on production tracker. So once you have all the data coming in from the application, it automatically graphs it charts it and gives you all production metrics uh, uh, right here, right? So we have total impressions, uh, we, we filters on top, right? So you could actually put a filter for a week, a month, a day, and you can see how your production has been going, how your production floor has been going on for that particular time duration. You can also filter by presses, uh, and then you get all these metrics. You have total impressions, screen use, misprints. Uh, you can see the total impressions graphs, and then impressions per hour, which, which allows you to understand which press or which operator is working with what efficiencies. Uh, you can have custom target lines that you can set that works for your shop and, and see when you're meeting the targets when you're not meeting the targets and you can take corrective actions then. Uh, with average setup times, you see the huge bump here in press one. This means something went wrong on 2nd of July uh, when the setup was happening, right? And, and it took it took a lot more uh, time to set up that, that particular day. You can, do, you can investigate it then further. Uh, so these are all kinds of metrics that you get, which production tracker automatically creates for you. Uh, the the dashboard is very very customizable so we can have so you can customize the dashboard and have your own metrics set up and and graphed on the production tracker dashboard as well right uh, we have quite a few shops that have come back to us and have added their own metrics as well along with the metrics that we give so it's it's very customizable and you can have your own dashboards uh, set up and running uh, what we also recommend typically is that you can project this, you can put this as a web URL on a TV screen on your shop floor, and you can like, you know, have your production metrics live in front of your crew and motivate them to achieve targets and goals of the shops that you've set up uh, for your production. This is a example of an embroidery dashboard that we custom built uh, for, for a shop. Uh, we have, again, total jobs, stitch counts, production time in minutes, total time spent on problem solving. And then for each job ID, we have like, you know, uh, production time, hooping time, digitizing time, and, and the rest. So you can actually know how much time you're spending on typically on, on these jobs. And then you can price the customers in the right way as well, right? Because you, you have all the data available at your fingertips with the production tracker app. So Ashley wants to know, is there a simple way to locate past jobs that you have notes or maybe you want the 
the uh, the metrics for that job. So how do we look up past jobs, uh, Yudit? Uh, so let me actually go into an account. So when we are on production tracker uh, and we go to the production tracker uh, set up here, so we have the screen printing tracker, we click on the view button. So this is where all the jobs, your digital logs are available. So you could very easily filter a particular job by the job number here. Sorry, yeah. And, and you can see what happened in that particular job, right? Uh, so that's how you can look up any past job and see what had gone wrong or how how well that went and you can have your production you can have your production metrics for that particular job come up uh, in the dashboarding section we also have a report section where your daily production metrics gets calculated you could download this and you can analyze this data as well uh, uh, so this is at a press level but we can easily have this at a job level also created so you can have your jobs and then total impressions screens misprints your production time setup time downtime everything coming up uh, uh, in a in a single consolidated uh, sheet right that you can just download and you can also analyze later yeah, what's really great about this system for everyone listening is that it's completely customizable to how you run your shop and the metrics that you want. Because we're using uh, the no code framework, all we really need is uh, when you guys are doing your onboarding is talk to the crew about what you're really looking for. And then we can get that set up for you so you can start with what you want to know best. And then, um, for, for example, Chris here says, is integration automate or automated for order entry? For example, manually entering over 500 separate orders in a day is not possible. We totally agree, Chris, which is why we're integrating with Printavo and Shopworks and these other platforms. So if you let us know what platform you're using, we can see about getting that hooked up because what we want is it to be a simple pull down that's assigned to a particular work group and that way we, they, we know what they're supposed to be working on and they're just tracking their jobs, right? Yeah. Um, to, to add to that, Marshall, uh, yeah. what we also have as a functionality is that you can have, uh, you can upload jobs as an Excel or a CSV spreadsheet. So let's say if your auto management software allows you to download all the jobs in a single spreadsheet, you could just upload that in bulk. And we have a couple of shops doing that as well, right? Uh, uh, and of course, then we are working on the integrations to make sure that the jobs automatically flow from your auto management software and it comes to the production tracker app directly. Right. And then Kevin wants to know how is uptime measured? Is it based on available shift time or based on total available time in the day? So what we want to know, Kevin, is what's the start time? Remember, we're putting that in. So if your start time is seven o'clock, right? And we at the one of the things that you didn't show is the end of day button, which your operator would click on at the end of the shift because you know, when you're slow, the end of the day might be lunch, you know, so we end the day. And then what happens is whatever happened between the automatic start and the end of the day is what's calculated for the uptime. Yeah. Uh, and we also like, you know, in the shift time, we also have the end. Shift. Time. In, in, let's say you forget to change it and uh you know you left at three o'clock one day and the end of the day is set at five you can always go back and manually edit to three o'clock and that recalculates everything that's in your metrics that's correct great so uh moving ahead what we've done as well here is we've created a startup toolkit that can help you get started with the production tracker app. So once you sign up, we'll send it across to you as a PDF on your email. And we've created a like you know a first 31 days, uh, like like a, a schedule for first 31 days where if you like when once you start following this, you can have production tracker uh, set up on your production floor and you can have your crew habituated to it and and using it. Uh, regularly, right? So day one, we recommend you to start with one work group, one user set, uh, 
track at least three to four jobs daily and track all things, right? Set up production and problem uh, for one process, right? It can be screen printing, it can be embroidery, it can be DTG or any other process. Uh, we also recommend you to reach out to us as much as you can for any help that you need. We're here to help you get started with it. And like, you know, you can schedule a call with, with us on for day seven and day 21 beforehand so that we can have a collective review uh, see how the production tracker is working for you and if we need to add any further metrics for your shop on the dashboard. Uh, so we have created a day one, day seven, 14, 21, and like, you know, till 31 days, what you're supposed to do and how you can get started with production tracker app. Uh, all you have to do is just follow this and you should be ready to get started with production tracker app uh, by the time, uh, like, you know, your trial ends. Uh, we give a 30 day trial when you sign up. So you could like, you know, during the 30, during your 30 days trial, you can actually uh, start tracking most of the processes and get your crew trained on production tracker. It's really easy. <laughs> so, but you have to, you have to do it. That's the key to this is you actually have to do the action steps of using the app in order to learn how to do it. Right. So, yeah. Uh, and we'll be sharing the startup toolkit on an email, like, you know, after the webinar, uh, for all the attendees. And once you sign up, you'll get it again on your email as well. Uh, Marshall, over to you for the yeah, next so slide. How does production tracker fit in? So what we really kind of want to do here is just walk you through what they would do. So let's just assume that you've got your, the production tracker and it's linked to a system. So we have Printavo going right now. Shopworks is nearly there. We're waiting on some tiny little thing and then that's gonna launch. And we're gonna be building out monday.com next, okay? And then we've got other ones in the hopper like uh, Inksoft and uh, De Deco Network or whatever. So what we wanna do is uh, for right now, your crew, so let's just say Joe is your press operator and press one, or he's the embroidery operator on machine one, okay? They clock in and then what happens is they would just go to the tablet or the, uh, the app or the phone or whatever they're using the app on and they would log in to say they're there. They would pick the job they're working on and they would just start clicking buttons and logging in like you did showed with those jobs. And then that automatically starts tracking the work that they're doing, okay? Uh, all their data that they're uh, they're doing, uh, so when they're setting up or when they're running jobs or when they're reporting a problem, all that is automatically going to the cloud. It's automatically going to their um, data under their name for their press or their piece of equipment. Okay, and then what happens is that shows up on the dashboard, like you that showed you. Okay, and then uh, that dashboard gets updated every 15 minutes. So if you had a computer or a large screen TV or something with just that dashboard URL that shows in real time what's going on, every single machine on your production floor, their data could be there nearly live. It's not live because it's not updated you know, every two seconds or something. It's about every 15 minutes it repopulates it. And then all of that stuff is up there. And so your production managers, you as the owner, even the people working, they can see what's going on. They can see how their work is contributing to the total or why something is really slow or who's really kicking butt today. That's what's really important here is that we're actually using these metrics, using this data to solve real world problems now. And the, the, I just wanna stress the challenge a lot of people have had with tracking production stuff is everybody agrees that we need this stuff. And typically it's done with a paper form. That's how I did it. It's such a pain in the butt to take that and you get a works with the data and then you put it into your spreadsheet, into your pivot table, and then you're doing something with it. You're talking about, hey, what happened last Tuesday? Now everything is live and you don't have to like try to understand what somebody wrote down because 
their handwriting is poor, you know, you really can do a lot better. You know, I wish I had this when I was running a shop because I would be able to do so much more than what I was able to do just because of the nearly real timeness of this, right? So uh, I think it's really great. And uh, I challenge you to just get an account and try it for your shop and let's get everything set up for you. Next slide. So here's the example of the data, right? This could be your shop, right? For, you know, what is this? Four days, five days of work. You know, what happened, right? We know we used 186 screens. We know we did 20,000 impressions. We had 32 misprints and 12 defects. That's pretty good, right? But look at our, our rate of impressions per hour. We really wanted to hit 400 an hour, but we didn't. So what's going on with that? Were we missing people? You know, were they running slow? Maybe were they running bandanas or something? I don't know. But this is what we can be doing to help figure stuff out. And you can start jumping on things earlier, right? Instead of looking at it, you know, from the rear view mirror, you're looking at it the same day as it's happening so you can make adjustments. Uh, Marshall, something that I also like to add here is, uh, so the dashboard is also now available on the mobile application on the device for the for the owners or the administrators. Yeah. So the dashboard that you're seeing on the on the web screen can also be made of it is it, you can just be looking at it on your mobile device, right? So it's literally all the production data is available on your fingertips. Right. So maybe you're 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 an owner in the office, or maybe you're offsite or whatever. This is how you can check on what's going on in the shop and know that they're hitting all their goals. So Ashley wants to know to track the rate of impressions. Does this hook up directly to your automatic machine and embroider machine, or do we have to manually enter in the info for each job? Well, no, what we're doing is we're tracking. You know, let's just say it was a thousand piece order, right? And uh, it took, um, you know, uh, two hours to run, right? You're printing that at 500 impressions an hour because it's doing the math for you, okay? So uh, all we're, you have to, at the end of the job, you would put how many impressions that you just printed. That's the only thing you're inputting because sometimes, uh, you know, we don't complete a job on today's shift. We're running some of it on tomorrow. So we just want to complete what we're, what we're doing. You just input those numbers real quick and hit enter or hit submit, and then it tabulates everything for you. So how did you get your crew on board? Oh, hold on, go back. I'm sorry. Uh, how do you get your crew on board? Is you get onboarded with the production team and then uh, really start just with one work group, right? So take one press or one embroidery machine or one team, right? And then get them to start using it uh, for a little bit to see how you can do it, how what their problems are, how do they understand it, that type of stuff. And then you want to make sure they're using it daily and logging all their stuff. So this is just you as the owner or you as the manager are making sure they're doing it, right? It's very easy to use, but the key is to get them to consistently use it. So that's the habit that you want to that you want to uh, celebrate and uh, track and make sure they're using it, right? Um, and Rosef wants to know, please review what devices the app will run on. So you want to take that one? Yeah. So, uh, so app runs on the app runs on any uh, Android or uh, uh, iOS based device. So you could be running it on Android phone or a tablet, or you could be running it on iPad or an iPhone as well. Uh, we launched it on Amazon App Store, so we're also available on Amazon Fire Tablet. Uh, so you could just get like you know a bunch of Fire Tablets and run the application on 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 Amazon Fire Tablets for 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 your crew. So these are all the devices that that the app runs on, and then of course we have the web portal where you do the setup and you check your dashboards, uh, and maybe also do some data entry from web portal if if that is required. Uh, so yeah, we're available cross platform across most of the devices that 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 are available. Uh, to use. Okay, next.
Yes, Marshall, can you see the slides? Yes, go. Great. Uh, so like, you know, here is like, so so here are some sample shops that are using. So we have various spirit warehouse. Uh, Ali, she's been using the production tracker app since September. Uh, so she uses it for screen printing tracker. Uh, she's built a custom six-step embroidery tracker as well, right? With with uh, with digitizing, with tra she tracks digitizing, hooping, and a lot of uh, other things. And then a screen room inventory that that we, that was built again, like you know, as a custom application. So the production tracker app helps you. Uh, so it's extremely customizable, and it works on. Uh, it allows you to build applications on the go. So say, let's say we don't have some trackers that you want to uh, uh, launch. Those can be launched launched within uh, very very fast and you could you could have like you know trackers and applications running for digitizing other processes as well uh, so another example so we have meltdown creative uh, they're using production tracker since november sorry and uh, they're using it for screen printing tracking again and a custom sign room tracker that 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 we've built right uh, so it's not just for for like you know uh, screen printing embroidery ddg heat press but you can also have things like sign room tracking tracking applications and you could be tracking your productivity of your uh, of your uh, of your printers of your of your laser cutters and 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 uh, uh, other uh, other uh, such machines as well right uh, so we have some exciting features coming up uh, very soon uh, so we are integrating with shopworks and monday.com uh, already we have a few shops that are helping us uh, in our beta stage right now to to like you know get get these integrations going uh we're also like you know trying to get integrated with inksoft and other softwares that that we showed you earlier uh if you have any integration requests please feel free to feel free to reach out to us and we'll take that up and we'll like you know try to put it uh, uh get the custom integration set up for you as well um uh, uh, we're launching five more applications uh, very soon, they're all in testing phase right now. We have art department tracker, a screen room tracker where you could where you can track all your screen room activities, uh, a post production activities, hang tacking, stickering, labeling, drop shipping, and uh, like you know uh, other activities that happen after production is complete. Uh, then we're launching a heat press tracker and a DDG tracker as well, right? So all of these applications will be available very soon on the production tracker application, and you could be tracking then. Uh, all these activities end to end in in your shop. This is our sign up link. So we're available on workongrid.com slash production tracker. Uh, uh, please feel free to drop your emails uh, as well in the in the chat section and we'll reach out to you to help you get started. We give a 30 day free trial. Uh, so you can uh, and and with that toolkit, like, you know, you can sign up for the 30 day free trial get started with production tracker app and we're there to help you like you know with all support that you need to make sure that that it's successful for you uh so this is a sign up link do check it out and like you know get started with your trial uh so yeah uh that's that's it marshall um uh, any any further questions that we have would love to take it up now so we had people send us questions early on let's make sure we're able to answer them so do we integrate with Deco Network? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure we will. Um, can the average time for production for jobs from start to finish? Yes, we do that, right? So you, you, if that's something you're interested in, we can certainly build an app for that. Does it tie with ShopWorks? Yes, uh, we'll be launching that really soon. We're, we're really close. Um, can you track contract embroidery? Well. We can track embroidery, but if you're contracting your embroidery jobs to somebody else to run for you, uh, we can't do that unless they sign up for a production tracker, right? So we can only track what you're doing in your shop that you have control over, right? Uh, um, interested in how you're handling job scheduling as part of the tracking function? We are not scheduling anything. That's the software that you're using in your shop. Uh, that's something completely different. We're only measuring the met metrics of what happens, not scheduling a job to a press for next Thursday. Um, main things to look at tracking. Uh, you you want to go back a slide or two because there's a list. I just want to show everybody that. Um, 
metrics list? Nope, no. Nope. But at the, toward the end, there was a list that you had where what we were tracking. Um, nope, go back up. One more. Nope, back up. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're we, we can't can find the this, we can't find the slide. But uh, so what we're tracking is we're tracking uh, how many. All right, that's quantities, right? So how many screens did your screen room guy uh, clean or coat or image or wash out? We could be tracking that. We could be tracking how many. Uh, shirts were printed in an hour on average. We could be tracking the total number of shirts that were finished today. We could track uh, how many art jobs were completed today. How many jobs had art changes? These are all quantity. Anything with a quantity, we can track, okay? So if you've got some custom quantity thing you want, we can track that. We could also track averages. What is the average time for something? What is the average number of something? What is the average number of problems or defects or errors? The average whatever. We can track that if we can just get access to the data, right? We can also uh, do um, any type of function with time. How long? What was the percent of uptime? So we have, we know what our shift is. Let's 420 minutes of available time, you know, how many minutes did we spend actually doing a value add on something? That's something that we can track, right? So that's what we want to know, right? Uh, and then um, how to change the mindset of production, also keep track of impressions. I, I, we went over that. Mindset for production is really you letting people know that we're going to be graphing this stuff and the reason why this is important is because we want to know where their problems are so we can help you do better work, right? So if we know that, for example, we've got, if you're a screen printer and we keep having problems with the screens, we're tracking what's going on in the screen room. We can invest time and resources to get better screens. This allows us to measure that and make decisions on what to do. So that's just an example of how you can let people know we're not trying to babysit them. What we're trying to do is really understand what's going on in our production floor and build a speedometer for the shop so we can understand our challenges, but also the successes, right? So in that way, we can do some things that make the shop better, right? Um, we're And so uh, your timeline for the ShopWorks integration. So Udit, what, what is that? We're nearly so, there. What's the story with Shopworks? So, we're, uh, so, I mean, we are already integrated. We're just like, you know, figuring out some uh, some information that we need as a part of job, and then we should be ready to go. But we'd be happy to test it out with more shops. We have some shops helping us already on Shopworks integration. And Chris, if you'd like to be a part of, like, you know, the beta program for Shopworks, please drop your uh, email here and we will reach out to you and we can, like, you know, get you started with that as well. Uh, we're understanding what problems will occur when we're integrated with Shopworks. And as soon as we resolve that, we should be, uh, like, you know, uh, good to go with it. And then Kevin wants to know, where do you customize your targets in the metrics? Well, uh, you can do that yourself, but our team is happily... Uh, to, uh, to set that up for you. And that way we know that it works. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and so uh, I think we're almost out of time. So rather than go through that, Kevin, if you've got something that you want to track that you feel like, hey, it's a challenge. I don't know if they can do it or not. Get in contact with Udit's team at, at, at with Production Tracker. And I bet you we can get that set up. That's correct. Great. Um, so I think we've covered all the questions, Marshall. Um, anything else that we want to cover at the end? Well, I just want to say uh, to everyone that watched today, thank you so much for spending some time and learning about Production Tracker. Uh, you know, this is a new app. Uh, it's only been around since, you know, the middle of the last summer. And we're developing and syncing up with other things. And we're building some really amazing things. So 
if it maybe you're using a software platform that we're not synced up with yet, stay tuned because we're going to be doing that soon or get in contact with us so we can see about getting that hooked up, right? And then um, any questions or anything, please reach out to me. Please reach out to the team at Grid with Production Tracker. We're happy to help you. And uh, that's it for me. So thanks a lot, Judith. You're awesome. Thank you so much, Marshall. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the webinar and have a great day ahead. Thank you so much. See ya.